All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be breaking down a Flounder Heights Zones match of a league set. I will be spoiling that set here, so if you want to watch it, check the description. If you're watching on YouTube, it will be there on the Ink TV stream. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It was a very good set. You have three seconds if you don't care. Three, two, one, here we go. So, this is game nine. I believe game nine, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, game nine. Or game, technically I think it's game eight. But, like, BO303 is weird. Whatever. Uh, this is match point, basically, of Graveyard Shift versus Alliance Rogue. And I wanted to break down Flatterhead Zones, because I know a lot of people have been struggling with this map. So, I want to talk a bit about why I think... Like, why I think that a lot of teams are struggling on this map, and a bit of things that could be done differently, as well as break down this match and what the teams both did right. Because obviously this was the deciding game for zones. So, let's talk about it. So, comps here. We have two supportive splashes on both sides. Machine. The main difference is we have a Tetra and a Carbon, which are both going to serve similar purposes here. So. so, both teams open pretty differently. Alliance Rogue opts to play out very spread out. The idea here is that Kibber is going to crab on Snipe and be able to pressure with his crab into middle. Scar is going to play on that little ledge. That's kind of the best mid-range spot on this map to try to pressure the wall as well. And right now, he could potentially also combo with the crab if people are too close to it. Meanwhile, Gray is going to hold zone and kind of bait for Volti, who can kind of drop in and go for anyone on the low ground. So very, very good rollout. This is kind of what you want on this map. You usually want two or three people on the left. You want someone pressuring the middle or the fl or and then someone else on some kind of angle, usually the flank. So that's what we're seeing there. For Graveyard Shift, they have Orion on the side of the wall, but for a different reason. The idea for him being there is that he can drop on anyone trying to flank very fast because of Tetra's dodge roll, being able to allow him to quickly descend. So it basically gives him a jump on anyone from an advantageous position, and it also gives him a way out very quickly. So that's a very good spot to play for the opening. Obito and Terror are doing pretty much the same thing. The main difference is that rather than baiting for a carbon, they're both painters, which is the first kind of problem of the opening, in my opinion, from this team, is both of the painters are going in the same spot, so the special output is going to be slower, and it's also going to be in the same spot. And I'll get to why that's a bit of a problem later. Yo, Ink TV, thank you for the rate. So we are doing analysis of the last game. I only really talked about Alliance Rogue's opening being really smart, and that's about it. Anyway, finally, Zara on the low ground. He is playing a bit more aggressively than Scar, mostly because I think the rest of his team is playing so far back that he kind of needs to, but also because if Orion were to drop onto the side Scar is on, then Zara would be able to follow up on any damage Orion is doing. Like, if Scar were to fight from there, Zara would be able to help, whereas if Zara was on the wall, he would be too slow. So both teams have a good understanding of positioning in the opening. So Orion does exactly as mentioned. Drops on Scar. However, Kiver's Crab is enough to, like, put pressure. Now, they mess up the fight. Ideally, this should not have been a trade, but it is a trade. Gray is able to try strike, and this is why having like both crab and strike like this is very smart. Because Obi's crab here has the advantage over Kivers. It has high ground, it has the better position. And the other thing is, even if Obi's crab is broken, he is already in position to fight, whereas Kiver has to rotate. So it's very important that Kiver's crab wins this ditto and can continue to apply pressure. So the strike was used for that crab fight primarily, and then the others were kind of just thrown. But like, that was the main purpose of that strike, is to swing the crab fight. Right? So if Scar didn't die, and Obito didn't die, they would still be up a player, and there would be no resources from the enemy team, and they would be forced back out of mid, because the strike can also hit where Zara is. So AR already wins control of the space. That's why it's a lot better to split up your double splash for the opening. If you're going to play around these specials, you need to have both of them. Because the strikes are really just a resource to win the crab fight. That's the whole idea in the opening if you're playing for strike. It should be to win the crab fight. 
So they did that much better. So Volti takes the low ground, and I'll zoom in from here on out. We can see there's a lot of hesitancy to actually push in. Because while they got two picks, they've exhausted all their resources. And this is kind of where I draw issues with Machine on this map, and in general. So I'll talk about it. The main options a lot of teams run to get in on this map is Neo Splash, Vanilla Splash, and Sloshing Machine. Machine has a very slow Booyah output, which hurts it a lot on this map because retake tools are very valuable here. The trade-off here essentially is A, Fizzy can stall the zones and are good to just throw across here, and Machine has a lot of angles. The other downside though is it's very easy to get a lot of people to die Machine with the different ways you can approach. And so Machine's kill time here could become a bit of a problem. So Machine is not as good on this map as a lot of people give it credit for, and it struggles more on retake, which we're actually going to see when Graveyard Shift gets put on defense. So what I meant in this case is because Volti's playing a Carbon and not playing for the Zooka, even though they got the advantage, they needed one more special to really secure a safe way to get all the space. Right? Like, one Booyah here to cut them off and to set Volti up across would have secured them here. So another special like that would have worked better. So that's kind of the downside of Machine. Instead, we're going to see Gray getting another set of Tri Strikes. Which is going to move people, but think about it this way. Gray can't walk into the space. Kiver is from Spawn and Scar is here. So these strikes are annoying for two seconds and not much else. Like, they will stall space, but they won't do anything. And meanwhile, meantime, in the meantime, meanwhile, meantime, uh, Orion's going to be able to flank and get the pick on a gray, and things are going to stagger a bit out of control because these strikes will now, well, they would be valuable, but then a Booyah was thrown to do the exact same thing. But this is game nine for you. So, I think the main mistake that was played on this map was Volti Zuka. What you want to do with Zuka when retaking on this map, what I think is most important, is you want to be using the Zuka as a retake. And the main reason I like Zuka better than Tri Strike here is you can pop Zuka, shoot, and then whether you get a killer, they respect the space, you can swim forward. On this map, it is very, very important to actually get your personnel there. Like, you have to be on middle when you retake. Because the goal of a retake is to get a foothold on this left roof. You know, it's kind of like left stack on Mako. You need this part of the map for the most part. Because your only other option is to go all the way over here. And nobody runs comps that play for this. So you're not doing it. So what Zuka can do is Zuka can shoot and then swim. And then move in. And that's essentially the problem with most of the retake specials. And we'll see it with the strike later. It happens to uh, Terra. Crab is the same problem, but Crab is a little bit better because you can kind of crab on this block. So the play against Crab players is to set someone up on this left roof to deny the Crab from ever being used on this block. And from there, the only Crab spot is Snipe, which requires other things to work because if the Crab doesn't get a kill, you're too far away. Right? And then Booyah Bomb and Tri Strike are basically the same problem. Booyah is a little bit better, but Machine doesn't get a lot of it. So even though Booyah Bomb works a lot easier here, it's very difficult. So Zuka, on the other hand, actually gives you that retake power where you can move your main weapon in. But ideally, what you would want on this map are Ink Storm and Wave Breaker. Those are kind of the best specials to use here. Wave especially because on retake, you could put Wave over here by this pillow very easily from the rail. So you can get Wave set up in a position where it'll hit all the walls, it'll hit the flank, it'll hit the entire zone, and it'll help your entrance route and clear Sharkers at the same time. Storm, on the other hand, is just a displacement special that doesn't require you to be there, and it also very easily can test objectives. The main reason we don't see a lot of those, though, is because the weapons that have them are not really great here. Squelcher really struggles because its kill time is really bad on this map, and it doesn't have angles to make up for it. Heavy can work here, but you have to be very good at getting the wave, like, or getting the heavy forward, which is tricky. 
And then Explo can work here, but Explo at this level is just a very difficult weapon to play. Like, you can't just run Explo here. And then CJ here is also kind of mediocre for the similar reason. So currently we don't see a lot of those specials, but I think if more accessible weapons get those specials, we could see it more. Bro, it's easy to use. We are talking about top level Splatoon. At this level, Explo is very hard. Yeah, Brian's the only person who uses Explo. Uh, well, Storm picks it here and does well with it. But in general, Brian's the only person to get success with Explo. At all. Right. So you see, when Volti Zook is here, he kind of does what I don't want. Like, Zuka 1, Zuka 2, Zuka 3. All Zuka shots gone. In reality, you just swim. Then Zuka and clear this guy from the wall when your team pushes. So he Zuka before his team was back, and he... Kind of used all his shots at once. So we lost all of that there. I know I mastered Expo Top 500. Top 500 Splatoon and Top Level Splatoon and Competitive are not comparable things. You can be Top 500 and be good at like half the weapons of the game, if not more. Winning here is a completely different story. Okay. Anyway, let's zoom out to see the rest of this retake. If the camera will be nice to me, then I would like to do that. Alright, the camera hates me. Fun! There we go. Thank you. Okay. So it ended up actually working for this retake as Scar played on the flank here. And what happened is Graveyard kind of panicked here. So Obito went for Scar and immediately died, so Scar just pressed Booyah Bomb. And the whole point of Booyah here is just to stall. And so people dive him immediately, it won't work. And if people ignore him, he's just going to throw it in. <laughs> right? So he threw Booyah and backed into the corner. And Zara's like, Zara even kills him down here. But it doesn't matter, because look at this. Terra's ro rotated down here. Zara's rotated down here. Obito died. And that meant not only is Orion split, but nobody's here. So even though these guys got the kill... They're in no relevant position to control any space. Like, they have to give up not just their zone, but they also have to immediately fight to hold their own zone. So in this case, Zara tried to fight it and immediately got him picked. And this is one of the main things that makes this map good, is that attackers cannot overextend. If you push too far ahead whether it's going off the roof this way or going over here, you get very punished. Because the further ahead you push on this map, the better the flanks get for the defending team. Other maps in the game don't easily work like this. Very few of them actually do. Like, Museum's your other example, and Museum is a Splatoon 1 flank. But like, Hagglefish, for example. The left flank on Hagglefish does not get stronger the further the enemy team pushes, it gets weaker. So it becomes very snowball heavy. Here, if you want to push forward as an attacking team, you have to do it very smart and earn it. Because it's very punishable. The further you go here, the more viable all these routes become. And now these flanks also become more powerful because you start taking high ground away from the opposing team. So even flanks, like bottom right here, and not getting a kill, can get value purely from pulling other people off the roof. And it takes a long time to get on the roof as the defending team. So while that's annoying as an attacker, if you're like flanking right side, it's equally, if not more annoying as a defender. Right. Case in point, overextension, right? Yeah. Regardless, everyone's over there so they can hold. Good strikes. Graveyard does a very good retake. They use their specials kind of one after the other and took a lot of space, kind of staggered the other team. So we're defense again. Let's go back. Okay. 
So, Scar playing this flank with Machine is basically where I would usually want Machines to play. This spot is really good to just contest Roof, and it can also kind of contest Zone pretty easily. So you can see it's another case of they're going to just pull people. And that's going to make it difficult for them to rotate back and get their zone. Right. And this is the main part of the retake that mattered. Is Volti going up here on a different angle? Notice Volti didn't come from this left ramp. Volti went on a slightly different route. And that sounds tiny, but like, let me talk about why that's important. Right? First off, he's already there. So if people are sharking the Tri-Strike user, they're not going to see him. Secondly, in being here, if anyone hangs out on the left roof or behind, which is where he checks immediately, they get pinned between multiple people. Also, obviously, he gets high ground. Being able to put a weapon up here and using this route is very underutilized. You want to get that kind of position and pin anyone who overextends on the attacking team. You kind of use strikes as a cutoff point. So in this case, none of the attackers stayed there. Which in this case means they just get to walk onto the roof. Now in this case, Volti does the exact same problem with Zuka I talked about last time, where you just burn all three strikes instead of, or Zuka shots, instead of swimming with them. So yet again, we've kind of just wasted a special. But Volti does get an angle. And while Orion's behind them, Orion's no longer a threat. Like, this flank is good when the enemy team is pushing on the roof. Or, like, like onto the roof. Once they're already here, you kind of just keep him on the slope and you fight him here. Exactly where Kiver plays. Because at this point, there's enough high grounds where weapons like Splash can actually fight it. It's by no means easy, but at this level, it's enough of an advantage. Now, Orion, to his credit, does a good job just trying to hang out here and keep Kiver turned around. I believe this fight gets open from Zara going down to Volti and Scar getting a nice double team. And then I believe he just sharks and dies. Yeah. Still, even that burns the crab all the way over here. Which, since you need to actually, like, push ahead of your own zone here, is actually a wasted crab. Like, that crab did nothing. So it is genuinely not the worst play there. Like, even though the shark went down, you burn resources that side of the map. And that's another thing that makes Crab a bit weaker here, right? With Crab, you have to kind of be in a position where you can shoot everything. So on a lot of maps, you just Crab near the zone and it's fine. But here, Crabbing behind the zone is actually not where you want it. You want Crab on this great platform over here, or you want it further on the roof if you have control of the lower area. So Crab on that spot is very, very good like, on the grating. And if it can be forced further back, there's actually a lot more of a penalty to it. Just by comparison. Okay, we'll clean the fight. Leaves arrow goes down here. Okay, so this is the first time a team has gone full control. Right, that's a full wipe. This is the first time we've gone full control. Let's take a look at setups here. Okay. So, I've established that overextending as an attacking team is not really one you, what you want to do. You can kind of have one guy go here, mainly if it's a QR guy, and that's okay. But the only reason you would actually go here is if you get the opportunity to get on the wall. Getting on the wall there for something like a crab is very valuable. But if you can't actually get anyone on the wall up there, it's not really worth pushing into that location. So instead, what you'd ideally want, like you can have a dude shark here, that's fine. But you want someone in this kind of lower area, both to pressure snipe, but it also gives you a fizzy bomb area. And you're able to poke and still rotate. Like if they push on the ramps, you can still help from this location. But it also gives you the ability to control flank. Right? So that's useful for there. Ideally, you also want someone watching the wall. 
for me, when I do range, I like to play just specifically on that kind of purple uh, block there right now. Because you can reach the wall there. But Machine can also play there. Try can play further forward. Octobrush. Even short range shooters with good aim can play that kind of position. And kind of just denying them from using like any form of special on the wall like crap. The main thing you want as an attacking team, especially against the comps the West runs right now, is you want specials burned as far backward as possible. And not even just because of the special being used there, but you want to keep the players from getting onto this area with the balloon or clearing the left side of your roof or flanking all the way around. A lot of roots to watch, right? Those three areas are what you want to keep in check. So the crab being used here is not just about not dying to the crab, it's just about not letting anyone here, like the actual players, to get in this location. Because that's when you actually get a foothold. So if you push as an attacking team and you don't eventually get to this roof or get a flank, it's basically like pushing on Mako without getting one of the stacks. You essentially, like, move forward but you don't have any valuable position you can actually stay on. Like, you don't have a foothold to push momentum further or to stabilize if you need time. So here they picked off Volti and Alliance Rogue just gave it too much space. They ideally needed to play to try to hold this area a bit more. And one cool thing you can do is if you're playing on this kind of right roof, if you're like a machine, for instance... You can play here, poke people, and when you get pushed, you can drop off the wall, super jump as you descend, and go back to a player playing defensively in this location. It's a good way to hold that position more aggressively without having to worry about jumping out or getting stuck on the low ground. Right. So now AR is really good positioning for this. This is basically what you want, right? Carbon watching the wall, Scar underneath, and Gray and Kiver together. One of them able to rotate to the other zone if players go down in order to give jump, stall, use crab, etc. So what wrong, went wrong here is pretty much just Volti backing up. Like Orion was able to take this space, and even if it's temporary, like no one is here to retake that space. Then he pops slider and dies, because it's reef slider, and that's how this game works. Anyway. But Air does a good job trying to hold, and I believe they just use this to a crap. Right, but the main thing is in an attacking team, you actually have to play to hold this angle. You can't just back off and play your specials as easily, because you give up the main foothold. So you really only back off this location and play to fight on your zone if you absolutely have to. The main fault of Graveyard on these retakes, by the way, is no one is playing an alternate angle at all. Again, with this comp, if you're not going to have stuff like Wave or Storm, you need to get someone on an angle to where they can pressure the high ground. Like, from a different location. And the reason is still for clearing this kind of area. Like, say you're in middle and you pull, like, the defending team off zone back onto their grading. That allows your team to climb the wall very easily. If they're backed off onto these kind of ramps next to the grate, then the left wall becomes much easier to contest. The defending team can be split very thin very easily, and that's what makes up for the height advantage. But if you don't play that angle, they're going to set up good positions. And from there, you're going to have to kind of brute force things, which in this case, they do. Right. I need to go up again. Go up. I hate cameras. Go up. Go up. Up. Get me out of the camera, please. Go up. Wonderful. Ah, uh, hold on. Spectator mode is a wonderful feature with controls that work beautifully. So we must wait. Oh my god. Alright. Well, it's stuck on objective cam, so we're gonna have to work with this, because 
Like, it literally does not want to work with me at all. Like, I cannot do shit. Okay. So we'll have to break it down like this, sorry. I, I, I have been pressing the right stick. It does not do anything. Yeah, sometimes it just breaks. I don't know why. But yeah, so let's kind of talk about what happened here. First off, Kiver did not actually jump out. Take right stick up. Yeah, I... Yeah. It does have free cam. Replay does have free cam. I'm just unable to switch off of this. Like, resetting back is nearly impossible. I don't know how it doesn't work. Anyway. I'm gonna have to make do with what we have. Actually, I'm just gonna reset it, because I think I just won't be able to see everything. Alright, sorry guys. I can just reset it and it'll work. Walkie, you can do free cam by just pressing the right stick, if you didn't know. I'll show you. Yeah, it would be way easier to do my job if I could have a camera, and also if I could see stats better. Oh, my flags are still here. That's cool. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to do this, but it's not good at it. Anyway. Now it works. Oh, the auto spec is still on. How do I turn it off? There we go. Okay. So, first, Kiver actually flanks here as a splash and plays for Kran. And look at this rotation. Like, it's such a big rotation, I have to zoom out here to see just how far they're pulling. Even if Obito didn't die, how on earth do him and the Tetra defend this? Like, Terra eventually realizes he has to go back. And Kimber just crabs here and just does not die. And that's all that matters. And that wins him the game. He got no kills with it. No kills. The Booyah dies to Volti's Zuka, which is clutch. Volti actually kills three here. But the reason Volti was able to kill three is because of this play. And it's not an intuitive play to make. On most Splatoon 3 maps, with how they're designed, you just jump out and crab. Because you need the crab to get in. But on this map, being able to split multiple defenders with how far away you can pull people, because you can threaten to contest the other zone, is what allows you to play around other strategies that are not just specialing your way in or going from the sides. You can do unique plays like this on maps like this. Now, what did Graveyard need to do to beat this play? The best thing they could have done if they could not drop and kill Kiver immediately, is to just stay up top and to not chase him. Like, they needed to stay on the roof and control the space and let Kiver go and get Crab. Because yes, he will still have Crab, but what you can do is you can have Zara play on your zone and watch it and still be close enough to throw Fizzies at the other zone and kind of contest the crab a little bit, or at least make it awkward without pulling people as far away. That's kind of your best play, and even then you're going to have to 3v4, and what Kiver can do in that situation, because there's a bunch of depth to this, is Kiver can play for crab and use crab on the enemy snipe and shoot at his own zone to allow his team to push in and then threaten to stall the other zone with burst bombs from the rail. Yeah, this map is cool. Like, that's the play options here. 
You can contest the other zone, crab to help your team from the other side of the map, rotate around to contest zone here. Like, all of that is just Kiver's options here. Other maps do not have this level of depth. They just don't. This is part of the benefit of having maps with a variety of ways to approach them. This is the depth you get from that. You get situations like this where the optimal play for both sides is like a bunch of different things depending on the situation and it's up to the players and how their teams want to play it. And it leads to hype moments like this for spectators. Where because of that distraction, weapons like Carbon that could never walk in normally get to go actually do the things the weapon was made and designed around doing. And you get something like that. <laughs> so, that's my thoughts on this map. I think Alliance Rogue had a better understanding of the positions needed to play. All of their retakes utilized someone on an angle on this map. All of them had someone playing some form of angle. The biggest mistakes was Volti Zuka being spammed and panicked too much instead of spacing out the shots to take advantage of the swim form. Besides that, the play was very clean. And these are with a comp that's going to be harder to retake than some of the other specials in the game. But they played it very well. Graveyard also did solid, but a bit of knowledge on how to play the map in terms of positioning on holds, as well as retakes, is what fell apart. When they were hard locked out or had hard map control, the positioning was too much of how you position on a typical Splatoon 3 map, and not how you position on a map with a lot of roots. And that small difference in how it needs to be played decided this game. So, I wanted to review it not to just to talk about, like, an example of how teams could use roots. Because a lot of people talk about, like, the flanks aren't actually good. But you could see something like Scar on the low ground, or Kiver on the low ground, or Volti pushing on a wall that nobody uses, typically. And it gets value when you know how to coordinate around it. Flanks are not about kills. That is one part of it. They don't need to do that. This game is all about positioning and resources, and the attention and positioning of enemy players is an exploitable resource to be used. And at the end of the day, Alliance Rogue took advantage of that, while Graveyard didn't. And that's why they won this game. I am very interested to see how comps develop on this map as more Storm and Wavebreakers are added. I hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown. Yeah, that's it.